Hi, so let's actually take a look at doing a physical to virtual uh, a P2B migration using System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2008. So what I've got up on the screen right now is just a remote desktop connection to a physical box. So this box has two processor cores and two gigabytes of memory. I've got one drive in here that's 320 gigabytes in size. I've not pre-installed any SCVMN 2008 agent, so if I just do that, the net start. The actual virtual machine helper, this is related to Virtual Server 2005R2. So I'm actually going to migrate a 2003 box that's running virtual server, just for the bit of fun. So what I'm actually going to do is I launch the virtual machine manager. You can see I have two virtual servers configured, um, both of them running Hyper-V. So I'm just going to launch the convert physical server. So this is the, this P2V wizard. And there are two types of conversion. So there's an online and an offline. An online is pretty much for any operating system that supports the virtual shadow copy service, so a VSS snapshot. So that's Windows 2008, um, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows Server 2008, etc. If it doesn't support that, so let's say Windows 2000, um, it actually has an offline P2B capture. So offline is basically the agent installs Windows PE onto the computer, modifies the boot environment to boot from that Windows PE, and then captures the hard disk content. So that's Windows 2000 SP4. Everything else can do the online using the VSS snapshot. So I'm running Windows 2000, so I can do it online. So I'm going to say convert physical server. So it launches the convert physical server wizard. So I type in the name or IP address for my source server. Now this machine is not part of the domain, so I don't have to be a domain member or a trusted domain with VMM 2008. I can actually just be any machine in a work group, another domain, because I give it the credentials to use. It's in a work group, that's the name of the work group, the actual name of the machine. So we'll click next. The name I want it to be called. So test physical to virtual. And now it's actually go and do a scan of that system. It's going to gather information, the hardware, uh, the environment. And to do that, it actually installs an agent. Um, if we actually go and look at that source box again. My list of services, this is new. So it's actually gone in using the credentials I gave it and installed this virtual machine manager P2B agent. So this is the guy that's helping it gather the information and it's the same guy who's gonna say, take the VSS snapshot and send the data over to VMM to populate a virtual hard disk. So it takes a little bit of time, it's installed the agent. And now we've actually come back and it's seen, so it's SP2 2003, two cores, that 300 gig drive. So if there are multiple drives, they will be listed here and I can select which ones to migrate to a VHD. Um, I can't reduce the size. So even though it's only using 10 gigs, gigabytes of data, I can't reduce this. I can make it bigger, so I can give it a bigger hard drive in the future. I can select, do I want it to be dynamic? I, when it does this creation, it will only create a 10 gig VHD file. If I create fixed, then it will take a 300 gigabyte file. So I like my hard space, so I'm just going to say dynamic. So this is what it found was configured on that source server. It had two cores and it had two gig of memory. I can change that. I can say, well, I only want it to get one core. And it's really not doing very much. I only think it needs 512 gig of memory or a gigabyte of memory. So at this point, it goes off and actually looks at the possible machines and say which ones would be a match, and it gets a star rating. So as you can see, VSO2 has got four stars. 
there are, it meets all the requirements, it's got enough spare memory, everything else. Don't be confused by this transfer type. I don't know if it's a, a bug or feature. SAN is always the ideal. If there was a common SAN attached, it would like to try and migrate the information via SAN. This is not the case for my environment. It's actually going to do a network type transfer. But in my experience, it always says SAN because that's the fastest, but it won't use it. It will do a network transfer. So why did this guy get no stars? So it doesn't have enough memory spare because it's actually busy. And also it's saying the network location. So it can detect when it's on this 67, it knows, well, it's connected to Sabletech.net is the memory. Uh, sorry, the network ID. It can detect, well, this guy has a connection to Sabletech.net. It can't tell for this guy. And I've actually got a separate fact about this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it now. But essentially, the way it can tell what network a machine is connected to is when you enable a physical adapter to be used by the virtual network switch, it creates this virtual NIC. Well, I've disabled it on this box. It uses the, the virtual NIC to see, well, which network is the virtual NIC connected to. If the virtual NIC is connected to sabletech.net, as in this other physical one is, it knows, well, that external network that is represented by this physical NIC is also connected to sabletech.net, and it can show you that. Because I disabled it, it has no way to ascertain which network this physical adapter is actually connected to that is mapped to that external network. And I can actually show you that after we complete this migration, how it shows that information. So obviously I need to select this node because it's the only one that matches. You can customize the rating. So how is this generated? You can have load balancing or resource maximization. With load balancing, the wizard says, well, let's say I have two, four, eight virtual servers. I want to make all of them do about the same amount of load. So it will spread the virtual machines out evenly between them if it can. If I see resource maximization, it will actually try and fill up a virtual server completely before moving any virtuals to the next virtual server. So it would fill up, fill up server one, then fill up server two, then three, then four, etc., etc. I can also specify how important the CPU, the memory, the disk performance, network utilization is, etc. And my expectations around virtual machine load um, for this virtual machine. So I'm going to leave it as it is and we'll, we'll convert it to VSO2. The path, so again, the path is based around what I've configured as the default for this virtual server, um, this Hyper V box. So notice how it says equivalent. So it actually detected that the old box was connected to sabletech.net and I have a network that is connected to sabletech.net so it's selecting that as the one it should connect to. So I'm going to leave that as a default. I can set my actions to when to turn this virtual machine on, uh, if there should be a delay and what to do when the physical server stops. So save the state, and turn it off, shut down the actual OS. Any issues? Uh, don't have any. That's what we like to see. So I can proceed with the conversion. So it's just confirming again. I'm going to take it from this box, create this virtual machine. This is the owner. 